This video is sponsored by Galax. Hey guys, Dantix here, bringing you an exciting Cyberpunk 2077 video today. I've bought every single vehicle offered to you in the game, so you don't have to. For those who don't know, as you gather street cred, you'll be offered cars and motorbikes to buy from fixers around Night City. These range in size, shape, speed and cost, so in this video I'll be showcasing them all and ultimately help you decide if they're worth a look. I'll be doing this in the order they're unlocked with street cred. Do note there are other cars you can earn during gameplay, but this video will focus mostly on the vehicles you need to buy. Before I start the showcase, as a baseline, I'll be using the Archer Hella, the car you get right after the prologue. Its handling is one of the worst in the game, and I believe that many reviewers didn't bother to use anything but this car, which is why they assumed driving was bad. It has a top speed of around 137, and takes around 7 seconds to get from 0 to 60. Comparatively, if you take the Porsche 911, it reaches a max speed of 161, takes over 3 seconds from 0 to 60, and has very slippery handling. If you want to know how to unlock this car, I have a video up on the channel. So the first car you'll be able to purchase is the Thornton Galena for 1300 eddies. It looks like trash, it drives like trash, but who knows it could be your thing. It accelerates just as bad as the Archer Hella, but only reaches around 120 max speed. I don't recommend wasting your cash on this one unless you really want to make a statement. Then we have the Villefort Columbus for 19,000 eddies. It's only slightly faster off the line than the Hella and the Galena, but it caps out around 130. It's a van, and as you would expect, it handles like one. The Chevillian Thrax will be offered next for 1700 eddies. Its acceleration isn't much better than the previous cars, its handling is stiff, but it caps out at around 151. Uh, well, at least it looks classy. And then we have offered the Mackay Guy, my my. The first decent car. Why? Well, not because of its terrible acceleration or abysmal 119 top speed, but because it's tiny. It can nip through and around traffic and go places other cars can't. Great for the city centre, but bad for the open road. For a cheap 14,000 eddies though, you won't be breaking the bank. Next we have the Archer Quartz for 29,000 eddies. It's got decent handling, is much more nippy than the previous cars, only taking 4 to 5 seconds to reach 60, and has a max of 161. It doesn't look terrible too. You'd think vehicles would be getting better as their street cred cost rises, but the Mejia Supron definitely breaks that trend. For 16,000 E's, you get a slightly faster Villefort Columbus that maxes out at 139. It's more compact and handles better, but not that one. For a whopping 43,000 eddies, you can buy the Thornton Colby Brute. You'd expect for that price it would smash the Archer Quartz, when in fact it's slower than the Mejia Supron van. Accelerating slower, handling worse, and reaching a max speed of around 137, so stay away from this one. Then we have our first bike, the Kusanagi for 22,000 eddies. Expensive, but it's a bike, able to get around traffic and to places you shouldn't be. Though it's harder to handle than the Mai Mai, it's faster, taking just under 4 seconds to reach 60 and reaching a max speed of around 179, our fastest vehicle yet.
Next is the Nomad modified Thornton Galena, nicknamed Gecko, for 21,000 eddies. 0 to 60 in around 3 seconds with a top speed of around 180 and decent handling. It's the best value for money for the early vehicles offered so far, plus it's a Nomad vehicle and handles just fine out in the Badlands. Then we have another thought in Colby, but this one Nomad modified for 49,000 eddies. It's much better than the Brute, accelerating faster and reaching a max speed of around 140. It handles about the same, but better in the Badlands. It's overall not a good car, but at least it's better than the unmodified version. Keeping the Nomad mod streak going, we have the Mitsutani Shion Coyote for a huge 115,000 eddies. By far the most expensive car yet, but also the first real sports car. It's naturally the fastest car off the line yet, reaching a max speed of 199. It also has the highest top speed. Its handling is great and sticks to any road very well. Yet another Thornton Colby, a family version this time, the C240T for 39,000 eddies. It's slow, reaches 137 and drives stiff, enough said. Then we have the Quadra Type 66, which looks like good old American muscle. It costs 58,000 eddies, looks beautiful inside and out, accelerates within that 3 second mark, and reaches a top speed of 182. It doesn't handle as well as a Mitsutani Shion or go as quick, but it's a lot cheaper. The Villefort Quartz is purely for those who want a classy pink pimp car. It costs 37,000 eddies, accelerates slow, and reaches a top speed of 151. The handling is also garbage. At least you're making a statement one way or another. Speaking of statements, the Villefort Alvarado is the classier cousin, costing 62,000 eddies. Handling like a tank, driving off the line like one as well, and reaching a top speed of 151. They're both quite similar in speed, with the Alvarado being harder to handle, but looking more luxurious. The Chevillian Emperor is not for those who want luxurious. It's a tank in the close to literal sense. As you may have guessed, it handles like a brick, accelerates in that 6 second range, and reaches a top speed of around 128. I just can't recommend buying cars for their durability, as that's not an issue in Cyberpunk, so I can't really recommend this car. What I can recommend though, is making sure Cyberpunk 2077 looks beautiful on your system. I play Cyberpunk on a brand new NVIDIA Galax GeForce RTX 3080. The 30 series GPUs are here and honestly they deliver some phenomenal performance. These cards are currently the world's fastest, most responsive graphics cards for gaming. As you guys know I only ever talk about what I use and what I support and I can't recommend the Galax 30 series more. I found that installing this card not only increased the graphical fidelity of games I played, it also increased the frames and lowered my system's latency. With ray tracing and DLSS on, Cyberpunk 2077 really popped in ways it didn't with my 2080 Super. Another cool feature is the Extreme Tuner mobile app, which lets you tune your card remotely without having to close your game. When it comes to competitive gaming, Nvidia Reflex delivers the ultimate competitive advantage. The lowest latency, the best responsiveness, powered by GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs and the Nvidia G-Sync gaming monitors, you acquire targets faster, react quicker, and increase your aim precision through revolutionary suite of technologies to measure and optimize system latency. 
So thanks Galax for sponsoring this video and most of all, thanks for this amazing video card. Now we have another Quadra Type 66, but the Javelin Nomad modification. This one costs 73,000 eddies. It's faster than its non-Nomad version, hitting the 189 top speed and feeling slightly faster off the mark. It also handles better on and off-road, plus Nomad modified cars always look fantastic. What doesn't look fantastic though is the Thornton Mackinaw. I think I've earned the right to say that considering it costs 128,000 eddies. Do not buy this car guys unless you're role playing a redneck in which case how the heck could they afford this pickup truck? It's slow, it handles subpar and it reaches a max of 144, no, just, just no. Now finally we reach the flagship vehicle, the one on the covers of all the artwork and showcased in all the trailers, the Quadro Turbo R. We get a light blue at 129,000 eddies, much more expensive than its Type 66 counterpart. It has quite slippery handling but that's good if you like cars that drift. It's fast, around 3 seconds off the mark and reaches a top speed of 173. For its price, I prefer the Type 66 Javelina. We arrive at another motorbike, the Brennan Apollo for a huge 94,000 eddies. It's slower than the Kusanagi in both ways, it only handles slightly tighter and reaches a lower top speed of 137. If you want a bike better than the one you get at the start, stick with the Kusanagi as it's the best you can buy. The Apollo is just not it unless you want to role play as an Uber Eats delivery guy. Then we move over to sports luxury cars, the Hera Outlaw for 62,000 eddies. I just want to note that this is cheaper than the Apollo. It looks beautiful and sleek with a neon glow inside. This is quite frankly the best car up to this point. It's the fastest, has the best handling and is the thinnest for maneuvering around the city. However, it reaches a 186 top speed, so it's still behind the likes of the Mitsutani Shion Coyote, which is similar to this vehicle but double the price. Speaking of the Xion, you can get a non-Nomad modified version at this point for 75,000 eddies. Not sure why you need more street cred to get the stock version, especially when you consider its handling isn't as good, it's slower and reaches a max speed of 185 instead of 199. The only thing it has going for it is that it costs quite a bit less and has a different look. Another version of the Quadra Type 66 is the Cthulhu for 76,000 eddies. It's very nippy but still beaten by the Nomad modified Javelina on both acceleration and top speed, reaching 177. It's also more expensive and doesn't handle as well. You'd go for this if you want the specific look. Now we arrive at the last motorbike of the game at a very high street cred level of around 40. The Arch Nazaire for 138,000 eddies. It has a lower top speed of around 178 and is about the same acceleration wise as the Kusanagi but doesn't really beat it in handling. For that price though and how late you get it, there really isn't much more to be said. Finally, we arrive at the undisputed king of all the vehicles in the game, the Rayfield Caliburn for 157,000 eddies. This car is so much better than every vehicle before it that it actually feels like a completely different game when you're driving it. 
First, it looks amazing. Second, it has by far the best handling by an insurmountable amount. It sticks to the road like an F1 car. It's incredibly fast, reaching 60 in about two seconds easily, reaches a top speed of around 209, and takes a beating two. It's wider than the Hera Outlaw, but because of how tight the turning is, it still feels better in traffic. This is the ultimate vehicle if you have the money and want to splurge. Buy it. The only problem is, you unlock it very late. Though, there may be a way around that in another video. Now, you'd imagine the Rayfield Caliburn would be the final vehicle you unlock with street cred. Nope. We have the final one, the Rayfield Erendite, the car you try to steal in the street kid life path. It's the Caliburn's luxurious cousin, but honestly, I don't see much difference beyond the long snout. It costs a huge 225,000 eddies, and frankly, is not really worth saving for unless you need it for a statement. Don't get me wrong, it's fast, one of the fastest off the line, but it reaches a top speed of 186 and handles fairly poorly and is still outclassed flat out by the Caliburn. It's fat from the front making it hard to weave in traffic as well. So those are all the vehicles. What do you think? What will be your first purchase? Let me know below. Like always, if you want more of these videos, be sure to subscribe and like. If you want to join the conversation, follow me on Twitter or join my Discord. I have a photo mode channel going right now and I'd love to see what you come up with. So until next time, ciao friends.